Hey, man, your tail's sort of weird. What? Uh, I said your tail was... What the fuck? I regret my mistake. I told you not to talk about my tail. <laughs> Never talk to me or my tadpoles ever again. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, welcome one and all to a spick and span wonderful, wonderful recap of some of the recent concept art and mini videos that Capcom have shown us recently. Focused mainly around a couple of specifically cute individual creatures, along with a bit of speculation I have about one of them. First up, then, you saw him in the intro, let's talk Tetranodon and his children. At least I assume these are baby little Tetranodons, otherwise he is quite okay with these random slug creatures crawling all up in his shell. Look at that tongue, though. Honestly, I'm sort of torn on this because I would love to see these little guys in the game so much, just walking around, tongue hanging out, falling over, just realized in the full glory of a cutscene or something. But if they were actual creatures on the map, I'd also be absolutely devastated if a hunter killed one. Like, these little things surpass Dodo Gama on the scale of must protect for me. They are so amorphous and blob-like. The tongue sticking out is just the cutest, and then the, the one on the side just, like, falling over on itself because they're so incapable of movement. Just, even if I don't see these guys anywhere near the actual game, this picture, this concept art, 100% makes me love to turn it on that much more. Oh, I mean it. Past this, we also got some stylized art of him in this position, which I can only hope will be an accurate representation of how he sleeps. Because goddamn, if he curls up into a ball under his own shell like that, that will be the cutest thing that I've seen since the tadpoles 30 seconds ago. Sorry, those were really, really, really super cute. But in the same image, we also see what I can only assume is Tetranodon hunting his main food source. His primary prey, fish. It makes sense, really, it fits the type of creature that he is, and if you had any doubt about that, well, they doubled down on it because here is Tetranodon stalking a school of fish underwater. And oh man, if the last pictures were Tetranodon is cutest, most happiest, and relaxed looking, then this one is the terrifying creature of nightmare that makes hunters shudder at the thought of even seeing him in the field. I love it so much. As I've recently been playing Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate and doing underwater combat, a small part of me can't help but look at this picture and think damn i would love to fight the tronodon in, like in a pond or something but we've seen nothing to point towards underwater combat existing in monster hunter rise so that's just a dream for far in the future i suppose in the meantime this picture is just really really neat to have nonetheless i especially love the way that he looks once all of his grassy bits are wet almost looking like seaweed camouflage floating on top of him there's also this image showing the color palette and inspiration for great azuchi Aknasom, and Tetronodon showing what they wanted the creatures to imitate and draw from, and then how those inspirations became the colors involved in the monsters themselves. Then, of course, the footage from the intro was from a video showing off Tetronodon's pin attack, which sadly does not see him try to eat you, but does see him try to throw you off and try to jump on you, and by God, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, giant spherical monsters that jump on top of you are great. There is something so wholesome and silly about it that when mixed with the seriousness and intensity of hunting in this game, it, it just, it makes me so happy. So I say the more monsters bouncing around the place and jumping on top of you, the better. Speaking of which, we got a ton of interesting information as well of the name of the funky big old raccoon guy, which is now known to be called a bomb badgie, like the word bomb and the word badger, but with a Y at the end. So at least it's impossible for people to mispronounce it, I hope. Bomb bad guy. And firstly, this picture, which just like, I, I don't know how, how to, what the, how, just, just, I'm just so conflicted because for so, so many reasons, I absolutely love this creature, but also like he's terrifying and creepy as hell at the same time. But at that same time, I want to pet him and, and give him cuddles. So like, what is this Capcom? How have you done this? How have you become the masters of ugly, cute things? And please, will you keep doing it? But as if you needed any more confirmation of that, they're also genuinely cute in a way. Here's this. What the hell? Who told Capcom of my love for spherical monsters? Who did it? Because this is just unfair. How am I supposed to make serious Monster Hunter content when I am too busy giggling with youthful glee at the base concept art of the monsters? Guys, I, I think I'm gonna love this game so much. 
I'm not sure why. I just got you that feeling for some reason. But if you want to see something really neat, here's a quick look into the actual biology of the bomb badgies. And more or less, what it says is these creatures aren't spherical naturally. Like, they don't have a strangely bulbous ribcage or something like that. No, they actually have a type of air sac that they can fill up with gas to make them that size. However, that said, this is the way that we have seen them at every point in the media we've been shown so far. So that leads me to think that this is how they will be naturally walking around the place, which also leads me to think one other thing. They might be usable. Like, not just a small monster that happens to have an air-based effect, but think about all the endemic life we have seen so far in Monster Hunter Rise with extra capabilities in this region. The little squirrel dude running around the hunter's neck that seemed to look like some sort of a hot drink equivalent. All of the birds and bugs that give statistical upgrades. The little snail guy that seemed to be some sort of heel. Well, what if this guy was a bit more movement-based? Like, what if when you jump on him, he sends you into the air? Or if when you attack him, he knocks you backwards? Just shoots all the air out at once, and the pressure pushes you really far back. Then he scurries away in a skinnier form. But what if this extends past just the hunter itself? What if it could affect monsters? I don't know if it's just me, but I'm getting this feeling that environmental factors affecting hunts is only going to become more and more of a factor over time. And what better way to implement that and improve upon that than by having a small monster in some of the areas whose protective measure against being hunted by these large monsters is to expel a ton of air to knock back everything around it and run away. These could have an effect on any given hunt you're in, and hunters would have to be aware of what they are and where they are in the zone and purposefully fight around their existence, whether that be by using them in a helpful moment to improve their hunting or just by being careful to avoid them most of the time when being knocked away would be detrimental. D don't get me wrong, they could in fact just be small monsters that puff up with air because they like to float around on top of shallow water or something silly and cute like that, but there is a pattern forming in this game of the wildlife having more of an effect on hunts than just being creatures that happen to be there, and I could easily see that applying to this creature in particular. This game is showing a ton of potential, and maybe this thought is ridiculous and would never actually happen in the game but it is a testament to how much passion and thought they are putting into the rest of the game so far that I even think that this would be a possibility. So, take it as you will. All in all, I'm really happy with these concept art drops we've been getting in these little videos here and there as well. It's really giving us a tiny glimpse of the world that will soon become home for many of us for hundreds or even thousands of hours. I've been caught in Dinosaur, and this has been a bit of a wrap-up of some Tetranodon and Bombadgy content recently dropped by Capcom themselves in various locations. Are you loving these creatures as much as I am? Are you excited for the game itself? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. This is the brand new outro to tell you all the things that you do that we love. So let's start with something simple and say, oh, we love your eyes. When they're watching us play video games, we make a bunch of jokes that are kind of lame. And when they gaze upon our failures, we try to kill the monsters or important, important news about the kingdom and Amelia. Rage, Cotton, and Hollow are all here talking about the things you want to hear. So if you want to be the first to hear, like and subscribe and the bell and we'll cheer. Some of you are patrons, even though we are all the noobs and you're the pros. There's nothing we can do to thank you. No, really, there's nothing. Nothing we could possibly do. Goodbye.